I was dean of the school for 15 years. I've been here for a lot longer than that. And at least under my watch, I would say that the creation of CLF was perhaps one of the most, and not the most significant uh, accomplishments that I was able to participate and bring to the school. I was so delighted to find that the Center for a Little Future existed and also that their main mission or main drive was to really uncover and support research that focused on looking at the public health impacts of you know industrial animal agriculture for one. Some of these things that they were revealing through you know the, the research they were funding was there were a lot of aha moments for people like we didn't realize that we're doing this and we've become so separated from the way that food is raised and, and CLF is helping bring us closer to the food that's being raised, how it's being raised. This is a very understudied area of public health where throughout the country probably 99% of our food animals are produced in large-scale facilities We partnered with CLF um, and did a study here on the peninsula. We tested to see if there was bacteria um, in the gut of the people that were being found on the farms and in the guts of chickens and in manure. Because 80% of all the antibiotics used in the United States uh, are used in uh, agricultural production and yet uh, that's what's a great cause of these organisms that impact humans becoming resistant to our first line antibiotic. And having CLF behind us with the well-documented research um, to say yes this is happening and to bring the issue to the forefront so that there's been a lot of changes with, with the antibiotics used in, in poultry feed. It was difficult to conduct the research because there were so few agencies that were willing to support that type of research. I was a CLF fellow from 2005 to 2007. They provided sort of this, this um, enabling environment to do this research that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. We work very closely with the center and apply the research very quickly. CLF is great for giving us that arsenal of data that allows us to go out to funders and attract funding dollars. When you give the poor people, when you give anybody the data, that really gets people moving and say, hey, we need to make some changes. So as opposed to just going into some research paper or journal, this was really about the, the results having impact and being disseminated to the community. This is where um, research actually is put to work. And I think of CLF as a do tank not as a think tank. But I have a very strong belief. You developed the evidence that shows that a particular policy or program will improve people's health. You have a moral responsibility for seeing that evidence put into good use. And Sid Lerner brilliantly thought up this idea of Meatless Monday, which has just taken off in ways that I would never have anticipated. We were very lucky to have this, this working relationship with the CLF what a great playground it was for new thinking and important thinking. We couldn't have done it without the Center for a Liberal Future. CLF not only supports a good, strong science, but it also takes this science and tries to translate it into policy. And I think that's why so many policymakers rely on CLF for information, why the advocacy community respects CLF so much. I will never get over my gratitude to Dr. Lawrence and CLF for what they've done for us. They give us the absolute proof and the statistics that we need to make our case. CLF is very active and has a very active voice in the mainstream media. It's willing to go out and actually talk about the research, testify about the research, write about it in not just professional journals, but in magazines like The Atlantic. And to say, well, 
Johns Hopkins or the Center for a Livable Future, they say, or they're going to be there or whatever, people take notice. They sit up and listen. They are so highly regarded by other scientists and other people in the country who understand what we're trying to do here. My role is to increase access to healthy, affordable food in Baltimore City and work with all the agencies um, to do that. And CLF has really been one of our key core partners um, from the very beginning. I think CLF has really made a name for itself, especially in your impacted communities. A lot of communities, especially in this Baltimore region, we have food deserts. Yeah, you can get to go to the corner grocery store and get the canned goods, but nobody sells fresh produce, fresh fish. I've grown up uh, most of my life in Baltimore City and I can remember when there were supermarkets that were easily accessible um, and I've seen them close up and go away. We have too many carryouts, not enough access to fresh produce. Some of the bigger picture stuff that CLF does uh, is around mapping and comparing data. So the food desert map has really been influential for us in helping us not only identify what the problem is, but to identify the solution. Within the Baltimore Food and Faith Project, we promote sustainability, and we promote eating locally, and we promote um, eating at the farmer's market. The contribution that the Center for a Livable Future is making is helping us to understand that we have to address these issues in these more integrated ways. At least among friends of mine in the food world, CLF is the, the one department of Hopkins that is familiar and also you know, has, I guess, the best reputation. Everybody wants to work there. <laughs>